the biggest transfer for me uh, isn't on this list, but of the ones that are on there, of their top 25, Baylor Shireman heading to Creighton is pretty mm-hmm. big to me because they were terrible at three-point shooting last year. And, you know, sort of out of nowhere, they got really hot in that Kansas run of 32 game. But if they had hit just a couple of more, I mean, they could have taken out the future national champions right there. Mm. which would have been nuts. I mean, obviously, if they had just hit a few more over the course of the season, they're probably not a nine seed, but that's, you know, a separate discussion. But that's a, I mean, any time you can add a wing who, you know, one, was the player of the year in his conference, and two, shot 47% from three, and is gaining, like, legit NBA draft looks, that's pretty darn good. And I've been a little cooler on Creighton in terms of, like, I've been seeing them, like, seventh in early top 25s, and for me, it's more like, you know, like 15th to 18th, I would say is about right. But if he's there, I think that's a really good team that's going to be competing for the Big East title. And uh, I don't know, uh, watching him with South Dakota State, I think you're sort of, with just about every Summit League transfer I've seen, you're sort of just admitting that the defense is likely not going to be there because the Summit League teams really on the whole do not play good defense at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't like stereotypes for conferences, but that one has largely held true. Uh, But he more than makes up for it with his size and skill offensively. So I think if he's as good as he was at South Dakota State, Creighton really will have a great shot to go far because they're going to have the shooting to go with what they built on this past season and a season that was honestly better than anticipated. So you're pretty high still on McDermott and yeah. uh, this group. He weathered the storm, and it seems like Creighton, they're just kind of the forgotten about Big East team, right? That they're just yeah. kind of, per- they're never they're bad. They're always there. Yes, they're just there. And then they have the, the breakout years every now and then. But put a lot of guys in the NBA. They run an NBA-friendly scheme. Um, do you, Are they a fun watch for you? Do you enjoy? Um, yeah. Okay. McDermott's offense is always really enjoyable to watch. He seems deeply interested in innovating every mm. year. Like, you know, ostensibly the offense he runs is, you know, like at least fairly similar to what he ran when his son was there, mm. you know, almost 10 years ago now, which is wild to think about. But the he's continued to make tweaks. He's really interested in the analytics side. He hired out the shot quality guy to help him throughout the season this year. And I I just feel like that's a coach that, you know, you could have sort of pegged him with the same, you know, you're not going to be as good once your son leaves thing that has happened to other coaches that are on that boat. Mm. But the fact that he's gotten better over the last eight years and has really improved some of the areas that used to bug him, like, you know, defense used to be really, really bad at Creighton, especially when Doug McDermott was there. And I mean... They, they've really improved that. I mean, Creighton's defense this past season was top 20 in Ken Palm. It was why they made the tournament. So I, I just feel like he's become a much better coach. I really enjoy watching his teams play. I just feel like, it, they. I mean, there's no one right way to win college basketball, but I feel like they play a clean, enjoyable, fun style that is, you know, just easy to root for. There, There's very few reasons to me to dislike a Creighton basketball team year in, year out. Why do you think their three-point shooting was down this past year, though? I just don't think they had many good shooters on the roster. I mean, mm. the the best one was Ryan Hawkins, who transferred up from Division II Northwest Missouri, and was more of, like, not really just a shooter, but the threes were the majority of his shots. He was not the first scoring option. They didn't have a guard who was truly great at shooting. Ryan Nembhard came closest, but he was 31% from three. And then, I mean, they just, they, like, Alex O'Connell is, like, an okay shooter, but nothing great. So having Shireman on the roster is really going to improve that. And if you can get some improvements across the rest of the roster, like if Trey Alexander becomes a better shooter, he was 20% as a freshman, or Nemhard gets better, or uh, Arthur Kaluma even gets better, that's a team that could really take the next step forward offensively. And they need to to match the defense, so... I, I would like to see them do well, frankly. I think they're going to have a pretty quality roster and a, a bunch of interesting pieces on it. What about Efton Reed at Gonzaga? And... 